It's Design Behind the Mask with your host, Carl Waldron. This is a show about design in your favorite fandoms. First, we discuss a fancy design thing. Then I give you two fun recommendations based on our topic. You come for the voice, you leave with a choice. Sound good? Let's start the show. Hello, fans of fandom. Welcome to Design Behind the Mask. I'm your host, Carl Waldron, and today we are talking about one of my favorite topics, the one that inspired it all, the X-Men rebrand from the 2019 Jonathan Hickman series. Now, uh, back in 2020, I wrote an article for Games Radar covering how designer and creative director Tom Muller redesigned not only the X-Men brand, but created a design system to govern the X-Men comics. Now, I had never seen a design system within a comic book before, and it was intriguing. Having built and maintained a few design systems in my day, I've never done it for a comic book. And the, the execution that Mr. Muller uh, created is all encompassing. It's very, it's very inspiring to see uh, something as I don't know. I don't know how you would classify comic book design, but it is definite. It hasn't changed a ton in terms of uh, you know how covers are laid out or how brands are used on it. And I'm not saying that this is a revolutionary sort of approach, but it's definitely a unique and welcome approach to comic book design. Now, if you don't know what a a design system is, it's basically a set of rules and uh, guidelines for a brand or a product. So design systems I've built in the past with my team have been, you know, to govern how certain icons, typography, colors, and uh, terminology is used in something like an app or a website. What Tom and Jonathan Hickman, along with their artists and, uh, and writers did was they came together and they said, let's build a design system to govern this family of properties that are the X-Men. And the result was, well, before we get to the result, let's talk about where it all kind of begins. Tom Muller created this very beautiful X to, everyone knows the X-Men X, that iconic X-Men logo. Over the years, it's always this very sort of 3D, drop shadowed, uh, sharp, you know, odd, not odd, but very askewed angles where it, it, it's pl- plastered across a comic book cover. It's very, it takes up a lot of space. It's very eye catching, obviously, but from a logo perspective, it it's not as simple as it needs to be to be reproduced at a small size or on a business card. Now, of course, these are not, these are comic books. You're not meant to reproduce these X-Men logos or Batman logos or, you know, Rat Queen logos really small. They're meant to just be really big on on a cover. But what Tom and Jonathan did, I'm I'm saying their names like I know them personally, Uh, what these what these uh, creatives did was they said, let's let's treat it as if it were a legit brand identity for a company. So they reformatted the way the X looks so that it's flattened. It's uh, easily reproduced in black and white, which is a key to logo design. It can be made small and it has very minimalistic features while also being a very bold and very striking mark. You can see this X 
on uh, either on one of the comics or you can head over to hellomuller.com h-e-l-l-o-m-u-l-l-e-r.com and his uh, entire kind of brand system is broken down there you can take a look and it's a it's a very successful rebrand of the x-men and i say that because uh mr muller has created a not only a visual system that kind of governs all of these uh properties be it executioners wolverine uh gosh i forget i forget all of the sort of <laughs> ex- external properties um house of x reign of x i'm just going through my memory right now uh dawn of x uh, come on. Cable. Uh, X-Force. All right. Can I stop? New Mutants. There you go. Excalibur. I remember that one. <laughs> Marauders. Woo. All right. My memory's back. All right. This uh, sort of design system governs all of these books through the use of simple shapes, uh, minimalistic type. He, I believe they use uh, Helvetica now, which is, again, another one of my favorite typefaces. It is a very... I won't say a modern cut of Helvetica, but it's a new cut of Helvetica. And it it works very well. It has a lot of weights. It has a micro cut that's very nice. If you haven't seen it, uh, you can check myfonts.com and look up Helvetica now. It's a very nice cut of that classic Swiss font. Uh, but they uh, the X-Men brand uses it. And it was one of those moments where I said, hey, I use Helvetica now. That's like, hey, it's you and me, we do the, the thing. Uh, now I'm saying this at another designer, right? Like, of course they're going to use type, but it's always, again, it's always nice to see the things you like to use used by other professionals. It's, it, it's almost validating, right? You're like, oh yeah, I like that. And that you like it too. And that means it's, it, it works on some level, you know, it's, uh, design can become a little isolating in your head when you're like oh should i use this should i use that and you know depending on business requirements or you know the look and feel that you're trying to get through or the brand itself you make your decisions and you kind of hope for the best you usually base it on data but when you see the things you choose get used by someone else you know you you feel uh, you feel good which always sort of baffles me when i think of the avatar logo and the designer who had to do that. What did they look at to, to make them feel better when they kind of use that modified papyrus font? Now, I think they've changed it since then for the next two movies that are coming out and whenever the hell they are. But you know, papyrus is such a strange choice for that logo. And the vitriol of how many people don't like that typeface. I mean, I don't have an issue with papyrus I'll, i won't use it but that's only because i don't have any projects that call to use papyrus every typeface not every type a good portion of the typefaces that have been created all have a reason to exist and as long as you have a project that calls for that typeface it's the right typeface so it's hard to say never use papyrus like all those uh you know yoga studios seem to like it so that's where you use it but again, I digress down a path that is has nothing to do with what we're talking about. All right, X-Men. The X-Men logo. Beautiful X uh, and a typeface that is modeled after this X. I believe it's called X Display. And all the letter forms are, they use the same sort of shape that the X has. Now it's hard to explain in audio. So again, I'll, I'll ask you to go to hellomuller.com and I'll put an image of it on in the show notes for the for the episode but the entire typeface is derived from the first X logo and from there they branch it out into this beautiful minimalistic almost like Swiss inspired uh, deck of how to treat copy, how to treat graphics, how to treat literal graphs and infographic information, how to treat, you know, black bars and how to treat interstitial pages because within those comics, which I read in uh, the original run is is really good. 
there are lore pages that explain characters and kind of give you backstory as to you know what's going on and it's it utilizes this design system and it makes for a very holistic uh a very holistic package something about something that i've always noticed about comics that always bugged me as a kid was i would go to the comic book store and i'd pick up a comic and the cover would be this ornate crazy engaging colorful splash page of characters and you know powers and all this crazy stuff and then you open the pages and the art and everything inside is so vastly different than what you would expect it based on the cover that's just something you know you can't really not that you can't get get, uh, get by it in comics but it just it's just the way it is this X-Men run using this design system kind of minimalizes that a bit where the cover has elements that are also reproduced within pages inside that all the type really works well together and the even the art sort of isn't as drastically different on the inside than it is on the outside uh, which is a welcome pace like it feels like an entire holistic package and it's it's a it's welcome um all the covers are, are really interesting to look at the branding is strong and yeah the art is great and the story was the story was great um uh, let me ref no the story wasn't great the story was good and i followed it well i fell off right after dawn of x i was reading both house of x and um god what was the other one was it rain it was house of x and something else there were it was a, a story being told on two fronts i can't remember the other one and i'll take this moment while i jabber on and on to kind of look up the comics that i have in my library but i was reading them simultaneously and once it got a little further down into the story i kind of fell off uh but the good thing about this branding system is that I'm able to jump back in and know what books are part of this run because they all utilize this design system. Where That's another thing in comics where that I, I never truly got a handle on. If you were to read a single issue and then not go back to the comic book store for a while, for whatever reason, you, you were broke, you're a little kid and your parents wouldn't take you, you're an adult and you have other responsibilities, and you return to the comic book store and you pick up another single issue, it was always kind of hard to follow which one came after yours. Yes, they number them, but sometimes, I mean, like Batman has how many comics? How many number 14 Batman comics are there? And like I said, the problem before with the covers being drawn by someone completely who's not drawing the inside. So it's a completely different art style on the out than on the inside. You kind of get lost. A design system eliminates that because you you can see based on the logo and the style that they're using the type and the shapes and the glyphs and all that stuff. You can tell like, OK, this is in that run of, you know, Jonathan Hickman's uh, X-Men. Which again is a welcome thing for someone like me who, you know, is gonna get lost. It's just gonna happen. Um, so it's a it's a nice it's a nice way to add some user experience to comics, which is I don't know. Yeah, maybe it is revolutionary. <laughs> um. Hopefully one day I can execute something like that, that changes the game for the better. User experience in comics has been a huge issue as of late with Comixology being bought by Amazon and them just completely trouncing the, the reader experience and just kind of burying it and then Kindle losing like online purchases so it's harder to buy digital comics. Like just comics have taken a weird hit as of late. 
So anytime you can point to a positive experience within comics, I'll take it. And we'll talk about comicsology in another episode. That's a whole other thing that I have a lot of thoughts on. But today we are focusing on the greatness that is House of X, Dawn of X, all that good stuff. X-Men Red. And uh, as of this writing, I have not read yet X-Men Hellfire, the Hellfire Gala, which we'll do another episode on that after I read it. And I'll give you a taste of the topic. The X-Men Hellfire Gala has done something interesting where it has created a, a fantastical uh, fake fashion gala that uses real world fashion designers. So there's this weird blend of a fic fictitious characters wearing quote unquote real fashion design. We'll get into it. It's I I spoilers. I love that idea. Blending sort of that imaginary world with the real world. But again, more topics for another day, more fun to be had. Anyway. I think we've reached the back half of the episode for the recommendations. I think so. I don't think I have anything else to say on the X-Men logo. I Oh, here it is. I love the old X-Men logo. The 90s animated series X-Men logo is iconic. You cannot replace it. And it has all the things you wouldn't want the logo to do. It's at a strange angle. It has a weird like a drop shadow 3D effect. Unca the uncanny, the uncanny X-Men, the, the type, the uncanny, doesn't sit well on top of the X-Men. It sits okay, but because the X-Men is at this weird slanted angle, it looks weird. Everything looks weird and I love it. Go back and watch the opening to the animated X-Men uh, show from the 90s and you'll fall in love with that logo too unless you're cynical and hate fun uh, you'll love it this X-Men logo doesn't replace that nor do I think it's better I think it is a nice evolution and applying real world brand tactics to something to a property that is in itself an established brand just makes sense right how can you how can you elevate this logo and its brand to maintain for years to come you build a system that people will adhere to tinker with update but ultimately stay within the boundaries of which will allow it to grow and allow people to know where they can play which will then facilitate new growth yet once you, when you play within the rules you can break the rules so this system is setting things up for later for this brand to keep moving now i would love if this type of branding not necessarily this exact x or this type combination or whatever i would love to see this thought process go into reimagining the x-men for the marvel cinematic universe whenever they decide to pull the trigger on that whenever they want a billion dollars they'll bring out an x-men movie and it'll you know shatter records hopefully the branding sort of follows suit and builds sort of a brand around uh builds a, a system around the branding the old x-men movies at least the first and second one kind of did that first class a little but not enough but you know i'd like to see them push it a little further okay anyway greatness that is you know design systems in comics we need more of it let's make more of it guys all of us we'll do it uh all right we are on the back half the fun half the good half the the 
the interactive half where I talk to you and you don't say anything because this is a one-way medium. Recommendations. Here's the fandom recommendation. Super easy, super quick. Go read the uh, Jonathan Hickman X-Men series. Go see the branding for yourself. You can also see the branding on hellomuller.com. You can see the whole thing broken down. You can see the typefaces that are used. You can see the covers in all their glory. But of course, the the fun of comics is to actually read the comics. So go get the holistic experience, not just the design experience. Go get the Jonathan Hickman run of uh, either, you know, Dawn of X. I believe that's the, the volume. Get the Hellfire Club. Uh, I believe the first one is out. I did buy that one out to finish it. Uh, the new one should be coming out soon, if not already. And uh, go read. God, no, I still have not remembered the name of the other. Run it's Dawn of X. Not no, it's House of X. And I think it's Reign of X. I looked. I looked at my book, and I can't, for the life of me, find out what it is. Yeah, I just have Hellfire Club. Maybe it's under D. Dawn. I'm, I'm losing my mind. Anyway, go read those two there. You can look it up online and find how the, the books kind of relate to one another. Read them in tandem. It's a, it's a great read. Real fun time. And you get a, a huge dose of this brand identity as you go through. So that's great. And then the design recommendation for this episode is also a fandom recommendation i had one for this and then recently this recommendation came out and i was like well i gotta i gotta change it up so the recommendation the design recommendation is a graphic design course taught by the creative director who created the brand system for x-men tom muller it's called graphic design for fiction visual identities with stories it's on a platform called domestica I believe it's D O M E S T I K A dot org. Again, D O M E S T I K A dot org. You go to that site, search for Tom Muller, T O M M U L L E R, and you'll find his course, Graphic Design for Fiction Visual Identities with Stories. And he will teach you how to make logos. For comic books. <gasps> How great is that? I'm going to take this course. I know how to do it, but I want to take the course. I mean, you can always learn something new, right? And he's doing it professionally. So why wouldn't I spend the 20 bucks to, to listen to him uh, drop gems on me? That's great. I haven't had the time because, you know, life is hectic, but once I get a couple minutes to myself, I'm signing up for that course too. So I'm going to take my own advice and take both of these recommendations for me. Fandom, go read the X-Men series. I have to read the Hellfire Club, so I'm doing that. And then, of course, the design recommendation, graphic design for fiction, visual identities with stories hosted by Tom Muller. I am getting no money for this recommendation. I just really like the man's work. Uh, on the X-Men and uh, he, he's done other great comic book stuff you can check out his stuff on his website I've said it already and I, again I'm not getting paid for this it's up there in the in the show just go rewind it and go to his website and see the stuff I'll put it in the show notes as well that's it everyone that's the episode fun times huh X-Men branding fun logo talk thank you for joining me on this beautiful journey of design and fandom. I've been Carl. You've been you. I'll catch you on the next time. I'll catch you on the next time? What does that mean? I'll catch you next time. Whew, I'm not even going to cut that out. I'll 